welcome to another Midnight Showing. As always, I'm Kelly, and I just got out of Minions. And boy, I don't know what to say. It's a bunch of yellow things going... Bob! Mic drop! It's just... Okay. Non-spoiler version. There is very, 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 very little wrong with this movie. It just wasn't that good. It just, it really wasn't. I, it, I will fully admit, it just isn't for me, okay? Um, <laughs> if I were to compare this to, say, like, Paddington, which I saw earlier this year, that was a lot funnier than this. It really was. It had less slapstick, but it was a lot funnier. The jokes were a lot more clever, as well as cute. Here, it's just the minions being the minions for an hour and 45 minutes, and... Okay. There were a few moments that got me to chuckle, but... Overall, I just didn't feel it was all that good. It, it could have been done a lot better. But it could have been done a lot worse. It could have been Puss in Boots. Just saying. I understand. The... When have any of these spin-off movies really work? Where you take a side character from another series, give him his own movie, and he excels to greatness. I mean, it... The uh, Puss in Boots, the Penguins of Madagascar, the TV show and the series both bom and the movie bombed. So... Was there any of these from DreamWorks that ever did work? I don't think so. And that's what The Minions was for me. Whereas Despicable Me felt like it was always catering to all ages with jokes that even adults could laugh at, with a lot of heart inside of it, Minions feels more like that kid pandering get them to shut up. It's planes and cars. It's... Okay, it's not planes or cars. Planes and cars have no reason to exist other than to sell toys. Minions exists to entertain children and sell toys. So, plus on the minion side. But yeah, overall, it's an honest-to-God skip it unless you have kids. If you have kids, take them to this. They'll enjoy it. Every single kid in my theater was laughing hysterically. Even the little girl who was tapping on, Did you see that? Did you see that? While well, I was watching it. She was too cute for me to get mad at, though. So, yeah, they were all having a good time. And I can understand some of the appeal here. It just didn't work as far as the movie went for me. It, and there were just way too many uh, snuck-in adult jokes inside of there. You saw one of them inside of the trailer with a minion inside of a thong getting into a hot tub, about to have threesome with a couple of hydrants. Fire hydrants. Yeah, it's... Um, that one was in the trailer. Not sure how that passed inspections, but... Whatever. There's another one inside of the movie that was quite questionable, and I think I'm the only one who saw it. I've even asked a couple of people who I know have seen it from, like, work and whatnot, and not one of them seemed to have noticed it. <laughs> but uh, I'll get that into that in the spoiler section. But yeah, so, final verdict. Unless you have, sk unless you have kids, it's an honest to God skip it. So, yeah. For those who don't mind spoilers... Let's talk about why this movie didn't exactly jive with me. So, as I said, these spin-off movies don't ever actually have a history of working. And this one... How do you make a movie about little yellow things who don't speak English, who only occasionally say a real word? Hell, they don't... Okay, they say yes by saying C, so... Spanish or French. But then they say no by uh, Charu or something like that. Whatever the f*** is. But they say okay and they have all English names. I just... I would love to be inside of the recording session just to, just to see them. So it's chupa pa pa pa? No. Oh, chuta pa pa pa. Chuta pa pa. Usaba. Hey! I am. Both of <laughs> I would just love to be in the recording studio to see these. But inside of a full movie where that's the focus for an hour and 45 minutes? 
Yeah, that shtick gets old after five minutes, people. It really does, unless you have a kid. <sighs> Comparing that to, again, Despicable Me and Despicable Me 2, Gru's story had a lot of heart to it. His relationship to the kids, uh, getting together with the woman in the second movie, there was a lot of heart, as well as a lot of slapstick and jokes thrown inside of there. And whenever it got too serious, especially for kids, the minions were always there to kind of reel the movie back so it doesn't go too deep into the feels area that it becomes melodramatic, I guess would be the best word. So, <laughs> having a movie that's just all of their comedic stuff without the heart and feels to balance this out, it's just, it just didn't work. It really didn't. Some of the slapstick should be funny. The only one that actually kind of got a smile out of me as far as the slapstick went was one scene when they're, they're trying... Uh, John Hamm, who plays Scarlet Overkill's husband, she being the primary antagonist of the film. I say antagonist because they're all bad guys here. There really is any distinction there. When, when he's trying to torture the minions... Where he's legitimately trying to torture them. <laughs> he puts them on the stretch machine. And they stretch. <laughs> it does nothing. Yeah. Next machine. <laughs> Takes them over to the gallows. Which was a much better gallows than even the movie was. Burn that movie. Hell. Just... It. Just saying. <laughs> and they all just start slipping through the knot. And having fun. And then... <laughs> John, John Hamm's character starts getting in on this and he starts having fun to get like little selfie pictures with all the torture devices. John Hamm's like sitting inside there. It, it seems like it would be actually kind of a fun and good time. But again, I've seen this in a better kids movie, haven't I? I swear I have. There was something that I know for a fact I've seen in better kids movies. Okay, so overall summation of the movie. Minions are looking for a boss. End of story. Okay, being more specific, three of them go out on a journey because their tribe has gotten bored with freedom, I guess you could call it. <laughs> and they want to find a boss that they can serve, the, the baddest of the bad, who will treat them right. So three of them go off on a journey, and there are a couple of nods to the other series inside of this section, by the way. Uh... They arrive inside of New York, and they instantly go into the shopping mall that is the primary location for Despicable Me 2. Just, everything's toned down back down to the 70s. It's, it's kind of funny. It's, that's one of those old moments that just kind of go, hey, that's a nice little nod. Yeah, and while they're there, they end up turning on TV and discovering Villain Con. So they decide, oh, that's where we'll go. So they start making their way to Villain Con. They finally get there, and second nod is Dr. Nefario, Nefaro, the old guy with the scooter. He's a, he's much younger. He's there with a booth showing off his inventions. Miss Cameo, why wasn't the wrestler guy in his own booth? Or have him show up as trying to steal the gem from Scarlet Overkill? You know, from the second movie, the bad guy from the second one. Did they just not want to renew his contract, the voice actor? I get it, but... Missed opportunity. They go there, and they go to Scarlet Overkill's big convention thing. Oh, I will give uh, whoever can steal this ruby from my hand a job if, as my henchman if they can steal this. Everybody tries, and the minions, through the power of slapstick, manage to get their hands on it. It's not even really shown. They're all in a dog pile, and when they all come out, her jewel's been replaced with a bear. Laugh! It's... And then she wants, she hires them to steal the crown jewels, but then it turns out that one of them draws the sword of Excalibur. There's some pretty racist depictions of British people inside of here. They make the whole nine yards overly polite, the buck teeth and bad accents, the fact that they're always drinking tea, and if I hadn't seen this done better, I probably would have laughed at it. But we've been satirizing the British for years now. 
just as much as they've been satirizing us fat slob Americans. And this, it just didn't work. Most of the time they're just doing, they're drinking tea at a time when they shouldn't be drinking tea. Okay. There's one reporter who had a joke that I should have laughed at. I don't know why I didn't. Where he was just like, Scarlet Overkill has now taken over the entirety of of the British Empire. If I wasn't so darn polite, I'd be quite upset and stirred up about this. <laughs> and just... That should be funny. Why? Because you remember this is all about the minions. And a joke like that is clearly for adults who got dragged to this by their kids. And... Again, there is a few other adult jokes slipped in here just for the sake of having a few adult jokes. As I said about the threesome inside of the hot tub, there is another one near the beginning of the film, and I'm the only one I think who caught it. The uh, you might have seen it in the trailer when they're coming out of the water. I wonder, yeah, that stupid pump goes off at the dumb times. But yeah, when the, you've seen it in the trailer when they're all coming out of the water following the fish thing right before they meet the T Rex. Because, yeah, the trailer is basically the opening 10 or 15 minutes, just the movie has slightly longer scenes. And I emphasize slightly. But uh, one of the minions is coming out, and he doesn't have the uh, uh, seaweed skirt, is what the best way they call it, like the other ones. He's like, oh, no, I'm naked, I'm naked. And he runs back into the water to go find something. He pulls up a couple of starfish and puts them on there to cover up his breast. He's like, oh, thank you. And he continues walking. Now, that's not the part that I was referring to, because as soon as he catches up with the rest of the group to gawk at the T-Rex who just snatched their other boss, one of those... <laughs> one of those stupid starfish falls off. And the minion, minion standing right next to him... They put a nipple slip joke into a kid's film. A nipple slip joke. I mean, the last movie I think I ever saw that had a nipple slip joke was the 40-year-old version. That I, I slurred my words there. 40-year-old virgin from uh, when he was at the uh, speed dating ring. I mean, just... Indespicable me? There's just... No. No. It could... This, I think I was the only one who caught it, because I did actually talk to a few people afterwards, and who I know at like work who had seen the movie and whatnot, just to, just to see if I was crazy. And maybe I am, but I'm pretty sure it's there. It's just, this movie, what should have been funny wasn't, and what made me go or laugh were the nods to the other series. There, there's a one scene in particular that just really cements that this just not a good idea. The movie that, uh, the part in the movie that I feel shows the case is that the minions are breaking into uh, Buckingham Palace to get the jewel, uh, the crown, Queen Elizabeth's crown, <laughs> and they get in, uh, they get past all the security through dance and hypnotizing, it's just as random as it sounds, but they get to the jewel itself inside of the case, and they get to the final guard, and it's this old guy, and he's just sitting there with his walking stick. So you think to steal the jewels? Well, you'll have to get past me! And the guy's clearly blind. He's facing the wrong direction. They're just laughing at him, and then he turns. He instantly turns to them and starts beating the crap out of him with a stick, making jokes like they try the hit no hat on him, like they did with the other guards. Doesn't even work because he's blind and basically deaf, and he's still beating them up. And they don't even really beat him. I believe that they just accidentally knock him down the stairs through three stooge slash stick again. This should be funny. Compare it to, say, Stardust from 2006. That did this joke 
perfectly well. Uh, <laughs> the old guard who guards the gate between the magical world and the real world, uh, <laughs> when Tristan's trying to get past it, to get a piece, past him, to get a piece of the star for, what's her name? I, I don't know, she's just obvious love interest. Uh, <laughs> he tries the same trick that his dad did to so many, so many years ago to get past him, and it doesn't work. And the old man just starts doing backflips and kicks and starts smacking him with his stick around. Just so outrageous to see live action to that. It was hilarious. Now compare that to this animated feature, where everything is just so outlandish because Bob ends up being king because he pulled the sword from the stone which doesn't exist. Hello? It, again, just, he makes it, when everything's so outlandish, this old guy isn't as funny. He's not. He's background material. He blends in with everything else in the film. And, ah, I just, I don't know. I feel like I should be liking this movie. I really do. But if I were to compare it to other kid films that have come out this year, Paddington, Spongebob, Inside Out, all of those were much better than Minions, in my opinion. They really were. They had more heart. They had more point of existing outside of take my money. And they actually entertained me and kept me smiling. And actually had me laughing at points, like with the Spongebob movie. This one, all it ever got was giggles out of me. That's just, just about it. So... Yeah, I don't even know what else I can really say about this film that I haven't already stated already. So, yeah, final verdict. It's a skip it unless you have kids. If you have kids, they're going to love this. And they're going to demand that you take them to this. I'd say go to Inside Out instead, but I know how kids can be. I work inside of a retail store. I really do. It's... <laughs> so, yeah, I really don't have anything else I can add to this. So, uh, that's it for me. Did you enjoy the video? Did you see, uh, the, the minions? Am I off my rocker? Do I not understand something? Uh, leave a comment in the, the leave a comment below in the whatchamit di jig is, uh, I don't really care because I'm stuttering enough. And maybe we'll get some healthy discussion going. And if you like the video, you can always check out my channel and other videos that I've done via playlists up in these corner. I'm not even going to try to specify which corner because I always seem to get this wrong. One of these is going to be my subscribe to channel button. One of them is going to be a card that links straight to my Midnight Showings playlist to show every single video I, I've ever reviewed. If you want to see some of my more recent videos exclusively, I will have those linked right down here. And I will have a link to my new Facebook page inside of the description below because annotations don't seem to want to work for Facebook pages. But, uh, yeah. That's it for me, and I will see you all next time.